I'm so excited to be here with you on the Today Show Halton Watchers. I have an extraordinary, extra meaningful guest for me today, Julie Mesquita, sergeant in a past life. Welcome and thank you for your service, Julie Mesquita. Hi, Tracy. Hello. And hello, everybody. Um, I actually, I'm going to correct that. I was okay. a captain. Captain. In the military. Yeah. Captain in the military. That still knocks my socks off. Or like I like to say to people, knocks my legs off. <laughs> my friend Julie was a captain in the military. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm sitting in front of the I Love Me wall uh, right now. I call it my I Love Me wall. It It's the oh. basement room. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You're, so you're already giving golden nuggets to our listeners. We all need a love me wall. Tell <laughs> us what's on that wall. Tell us a bit about your past back there. You know what? First, can I talk about you? Because I know. I know <laughs> or I, how we met in the past. I wanted to tell everybody because a lot of people don't know this, but I met Tracy years ago uh, when I was skydiving, I think in 2002. And <laughs> Tracy, you asked me to go skydiving. And uh, party. I go skydiving. So I went, we made arrangements and I went to pick you up one day. And uh, I think it was Saturday, early, early morning. And you were ready to go. You got in the car and you said something so unusual to me <laughs> at that moment. You looked at me, you got in the car and you looked at me and you said, do you mind if I take my legs off? <laughs> Tracy, nobody's ever asked me that before. <laughs> Well, it was a long drive. What do you mean? Nobody <laughs> takes their legs off. <laughs> but you know what? That began a weekend of a whole lot of skydiving fun. I just set the tone right there. And we had such a blast, didn't we? Yes. And we had only known each other 24 hours approximately at that point. 24 or 48 hours. Yeah. Uh, give really, or take. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> it was just a party. At, you skydive? I want to skydive. And like. 14 organizations said no, and you said yes. This is so great. And we got lucky. We went to Gananoque Skydive and had a great time, yeah. We sure did. We sure did. And then I found out that that wasn't just like a weekend adventure. It was a lifestyle for you. 500 dives, holy cow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I Yeah, it was, a, it was sort of a passion of mine. Uh, things have changed a little bit. Like, as you mentioned, uh, I now... Um, you know, I did my military career, uh, learned a whole lot from uh, from my military career, all about sort of um, resiliency and, and not giving up. And uh, and I have I have a little story about that. Oh, uh, my gosh. One time, uh, you know, on my parachute course, they, they actually make it really difficult for you. The uh, the sergeants, they, they just make your life a living hell. Mm -hmm. and, and what they want you to do, they're encouraging you to actually quit. Um, one time they took us on a really, really long and grueling run and, and we went all over and we were coming back towards the barracks. And what normally happens is we go to the barracks and we do a cool down and then we're all done. But this time they ran us past the barracks and do you know, a whole group of people, they just quit. They just, that was it. They were, they were gunning for the barracks, figuring it was all over and then they quit and the rest of us we ran ahead um the people who quit they were sent home right away they they were they were not the kind of people that the military was looking for and and they got sent home and the rest of us we only ran another i'd say 200 meters and then we turned around and came back that was it it was we only really ran until we weeded out the people who were going to quit and wow and it taught me something it taught me that, you know, in life, even you don't know when it's going to end. Like you, yeah. you got to keep gunning for it and you got to keep going one foot in front of the other because you don't know when the finish line is. And, yeah. and it's really pays off if you carry on. Yeah. Right. And I know you probably have experiences just like that. Well, and I think you and I are kindred spirits and why we click so quick that skydiving weekend. You talked about how so many people, they say they want to skydive the next morning and they never show up when the alarm goes off, right? Oh, and yeah. They, they, they quit before the actual journey. And so how amazing that you 
were smart enough to keep running. And I that does parallel a lot. And you probably know this now with your afterlife of lupus that you didn't know you were going to have way back then. But that as a myself, as a person with a disability, a lot of people, out of the goodness of their heart in a way, not like your sergeants drilling you that day, but try to make me quit. Try to make me quit sailing. Try to make me quit a profession. Try to make me quit skiing. You know, even when there was downsizing and bankruptcy in organizations, you know, for the for the long run, it's probably best, you know, cut your losses and quit now kind of life. And so it's funny that they did that too. They try to make you quit and you didn't, and you still haven't, and you've got so much going on. That's like such a powerful story. And you talk about things like even making beds have meaning with resiliency and training uh, back in your, your learning days. Yeah. One of the, yeah, it's true actually. And um, yeah, it, it is important to carry on. It is important to, to go ahead and, and in the military details matter. Mm. And, and that's why one of the first things they teach you is to make a bed and to make a bed, it's the corners are square. Uh, the pillows in the center. It is sometimes we iron the, sh the sheets, the, the oh fold down gosh. sheets and it is pristine. This bed is amazing. And, uh, and it's, but that's interesting because when you go and have your, the rest of your day, you've already accomplished something. And when you had a really hard day, you know, and, and they were giving you a really hard time that day, you're doing a lot of physical exercise and stuff. You come back and you got this beautiful, well-made bed. <laughs> well, and you know, you talk about not quitting and this beautiful, well-made bed to come back to and. And it sort of sounds like a bit of a coping mechanism. Like, well, how does that, how does making your bed relate to your time in Bosnia or, or others that are serving for us in Canada? You know what? I'll, I'll even bring it to um, having lupus and being okay. now on dialysis. Um, you know, there are days that, uh, that you got arthritis really bad and you can't barely walk or, or the lining of your lungs is, uh, it, it affects that and it actually um, lowers your lung capacity so you're fatigued. Uh, in those days, it's the same thing. You've got to get up and you start off by making your bed. And you feel terrible. You feel like crap um, that day. Uh, but you know that that goes away. In lupus, there's, there's peaks and valleys. It goes away. It's for a short period of time. you got to keep your mind ahead of what's coming up. Can Julie, can you tell me a little bit about what lupus is for those out there that don't know what lupus is? Absolutely. Um, lupus, I have lupus nephritis and nephritis part means it affects the kidneys. So I actually need a kidney transplant. Yeah. Um, so lupus is an autoimmune disease where your cells, they recognize your own cells as enemies and they attack. And so this affects all the organs of your body, including your skin. Um, and lupus tends to pull in the kidneys. So it's very common to have kidney issues uh, mm -hmm. with lupus. And so what they have to do for me is uh, I go for, um, they exchange my blood. And so because the kidneys affect your salts and minerals and water, uh, I need to go in and have an exchange of blood in order to clean my blood and, and take out the excess water. Okay. Well, thank you for explaining that so that we can all understand. And, and, and I think really what it tells me is that we can't understand. We have no idea what it is to be in your shoes, but it, I do know. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say it is a setback sometimes, but you know what? I still went for my ski trip last a couple weekends ago yes. and, and I'm still out there uh, doing stuff and having fun. So, so yeah, I have, you know, once a week I have, uh, or sorry, three times a week I go yeah. for dialysis. And, uh, and sometimes I have good days. Sometimes I have bad days. All that means is that you just got to be flexible. Yeah. You know, Lupin yeah. doesn't care about my plans. No. And, and <laughs> I just have to sit back and, and understand that, understand my body and, and it, be flexible and plan ahead. And keep running past those barracks. <laughs> keep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
I think you, you make your bet, right? Your coping mechanism, focus on the details and keep running. Don't stop. And uh, I don't want to stop. And it's needed time for a commercial break. I have a thousand questions for you. And I think what's really exciting for all of our listeners is you have some neat upcoming events right now here in Halton because of your present endeavor. And it's one of your ways of coping with, okay, here are my days. What's my next adventure? And so right after these messages, we are all going to be going places with Julie if you're smart enough to stay tuned right after these messages. We'll be right back. 